So if you think about it now, you have covered the, all of the anterior aspect of the arm, the flexor aspect of the forearm, because it's supplied either by the median or the ulnar. Nothing to do with radial, nothing to do with muscular cutaneous. Okay? Now, musculocutaneous. Other bit is, it's called musculocutaneous. So what is a cutaneous component in it? And what's the nerve called? Intercostal brachial. Oh, oh, no, no, not intercostal brachial. Why, why is it called, mus sorry. Why is it called uh, musculocutaneous? Where is the cutaneous part? It's uh, muscular, isn't it? Which one, where is it? Um, it's the skin, is that what you're asking? Yes, yes, tell me more. Uh, yes, so which part of the skin? Okay, so the musculocutaneous nerve comes lateral to the artery, then it lies between the coracobrachialis muscle. You have the coracobrachialis here, it lies between the coracobrachialis, then it has, it has supplied all the three BBC muscles, and then it becomes cutaneous. At this point, it's called the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. So that, that's why it's called musculocutaneous. Okay? Your medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm comes directly from brachial plexus. The lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm is a continuation of the musculocutaneous nerve. Okay. Coming down here, for now, um, to get our median nerve and the ulnar nerve covered in the forearm, we'll just cover the Cubital fossa. Very good, uh, no, quite an important question in the, in the exam. Um, okay, you can take it. Boundaries of the cubital fossa? The boundaries of the cubital fossa are, well, as you said, there's the floor, which is the brachialis. Floor is the brachialis. What is on the lateral side? Which muscle is this? Corocobrachialis is coming from here. This is brachioradialis. 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 Okay. Bra if you sort of semi-pronate your forearm, semi-pronate, and then you uh, radially extend the wrist this way, the muscle you're feeling is a brachioradialis. So semi-pronate your forearm and lift your wrist up. That's a brachioradialis. So that is your lateral boundary. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. So that, that's the lateral boundary of the cubital fossa. What is the medial side? Pronated teres. So pronated teres, brachioradialis, and an imaginary line between the two condyles. So those are the boundaries of the cubital fossa. Bound at the floor is formed by the brachialis muscle. What's on the roof? The roof, on the roof you have the skin, then you have some subcutaneous tissue. On the medial side, you have the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. And the lateral side, you have the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Then the vein, you can see here, which vein is that? What is it called? Hmm? Was median, cubital vein? median cubital vein. Median cubital vein is a union of the cephalic vein from here and the basilic vein from the medial side. So that's a median cubital vein. The roof is also reinforced by the tendon of biceps. So uh, this, is a bi this is a biceps. And from the biceps tendon, there is an aponeurosis which comes up that reinforces the roof. So if you reflect the skin, what are the structures you see from medial to lateral? What's the most medial structure? You know, you're always scannulating here. Nerve. Medial, nerve. medial nerve. First is the, the most medial structure, the median nerve. After that is? Medial now, median cubital vein is on the skin. But we, now we are reflecting the skin. We are going to do the cubital fossa. Median nerve, brachial artery. Second is the brachial artery. And the third structure is the tendon of biceps. Okay, so these are the three important structures in the cubital fossa. And the floor is formed by the brachialis muscle. Okay. So, if you imagine uh, the hand, there are eight forearm muscles. Um, you know, as I said, the things we are covering are quite relevant to your exam. Eight forearm muscles in the hand, out of which 
the five are arranged superficial and three are deep in the forearm. So if you um, uh, tighten and flex your forearm, you can read the muscles you feel there are eight in total. Okay, the first one you feel the first one uh, here is a pronator teres. The next one is flexor carpe radialis. Third one is palmaris longus. Fourth one is flexor digitorum superficialis. And the fifth one is flexor carpi ulnaris. Now sometimes you know the flexor digitorum superficialis, it's classified as an intermediate layer. So in the exam, if you get the superficial ones, make sure that uh, this one, the, uh, if at all, it's all separately, just remember that it's an intermediate layer, not necessarily the superficial layer, which is called the flexor digitorum superficialis, okay? Now you go deeper, what do you find? You got three muscles, so you got five muscles superficial, three deep. The three deep muscles are flexor pollicis longus to the thumb, flexor digitorum profundus to the distal interphalangeal joints, and the pronator quadratus. Okay, so the pronator teres works more proximally and pronator quadratus more distally. Okay, these are the eight muscles, out of which the flexor carpe ulnaris and the flexor digitorum profundus to these two fingers are supplied by ulnar nerve. Everything else is by median nerve. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.